Don't get weird. I know it's weird right now, but I'm not fucking dead. I'm here. <laughs> I'm telling the story. <laughs> All right? You can unclench your buttholes. This isn't... This isn't ghost comedy. <laughs> How you doing, ladies? Can I interest you in... Uh, three seconds. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. 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 What's up, little Roy? I did it again. Hello, Roy. How's the water? Does it feel pure? Inside of you. You can hear this radio show, the bonfire on Comedy Central Radio. This is Dan Sauter. I live in New York City. Uh, I've been there for 10 years. Originally, I'm from Denver, Colorado. I grew up in Aurora. Yeah, people stop cheering after you say that. <laughs> But for five years, I lived in Tucson, Arizona, which, uh, that's the reason there's one applause to that. <laughs> that's a real niche group. Uh, there are good people in Tucson, but I found most of them to be angry, sunburnt white people. <laughs> Just walking around like, all oh, these Mexicans. You're like, yeah, it used to be Mexico. <laughs> but they're supposed to be here. You're not. <laughs> That's why you're burnt all the time. <laughs> Just go back to the Great Lakes and eat curdled cheeses. <laughs> it's what us pinks do best. <laughs> when I lived in Tucson, I went to school there, but I also uh, lived with a, a drug dealer, which I can't recommend enough if you do drugs. <laughs> uh, if you do drugs, live with a drug dealer. It's like living at Costco. It's just free samples every day. And then Costco gets robbed, and you're like, you know what, I don't think I should live at Costco anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is a bad idea. I need to really get my life together at this point. But when I moved to Tucson, um, my first and best friend that I made there was a, a guy named Amir, who was uh, an Israeli kid from Long Island. And uh, yeah, I don't know if that's for Israeli or Long Island, but uh, <laughs> keep it moving forward. Those are two, you know. But Amir was the first real person I met from Long Island, and he was very Long Island. He was very like, yeah, bro, like everything. That just existed as a sentence filler, like, yeah, bro. He would do these things that certain people in Long Island do, that they're uh, question statements. So he says a statement, but it's framed like a question. So he'd come in the living room and be like, yo, these Nikes are ill, right? Yes. I don't know if that's the desired response. Amir was very good at selling weed. He was very good at it. It was a natural habit that he just picked up and ran with. Uh, freshman year, it started at, you know, 20 bags and then eighths. And then sophomore year, it was like quarters and half ounces. Then I moved in with him and it went to like ounces to quarter pounds. You know, then our lease ran up, but the furniture was getting good, so I, you know, released. I was like, yeah, let's keep going with this. <laughs> he started getting to, like, pounds, and then, you know, he got a fish tank. Um, hey, drug dealers, stop with the fish tanks. <laughs> it's hacky now. It's also stupid. You're gonna have a flood. Care about your other possessions, please. I'm sorry. I'm really hyped up about this, as you can tell. But I didn't have to sell drugs. I just, I just smoked his weed and looked at his fish tank. So it was a pretty good fucking deal. <laughs> One day I'm going to do laundry. I'm a broke college student. I have six loads of laundry in six plastic bags. Like I'm fucking moving out of a girlfriend's house who has a drug problem. <laughs> it's like, I'm serious, Donna, I am gone now. <laughs> but I fill up my car, <laughs> I go. I go to the bank and I turn $10 into $10 and quarters. At the time, I'm wearing uh, cargo shorts, a liquor t-shirt, and uh, a swimsuit as underwear. Because <laughs> it was laundry day. I'm not, 
I'm not that giant of a piece of shit where I'm just like, oh, I can take a shower with it on, it washes it. It's pretty much, you know. <laughs> it just takes care of itself. So I go and I change $10 into $5 and quarters, which I put on my right leg, and $5 and quarters that I put on my left leg. So when I walk around, it makes a noise like, shh, shh. I sound like the shittiest sheriff in the West. <laughs> it's like, oh, hello. It's just awful. It was awful. So I have my pockets to change. I get to my car and Amir calls me. And he's like, yo, we're getting robbed? And I'm like, I don't. <laughs> Is that a question or a statement? You gotta tell me right now, because this is very dangerous. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I was gonna do a deal, and these guys came by, and you know, I think they're trying to rob me. So, you know, I called off the deal. And I'm like, all right. He's like, well, you drive around the neighborhood and see if they're there or not. Which, sure, whatever. I'm driving a 1996 Dodge Stratus. It's a real hunk of shit. <laughs> so I probably just look like feds to them. But I, I do a lap, I don't see anybody, so I pull into our carport that's under our apartment and standing there when I get out of the car, the first guy's like this six foot four piece of white trash. Like, you gotta understand something about me. When I was a little kid, my dad moved to this town in Northern California that grows like the biggest pieces of white trash. <laughs> So at 33, I like to fancy myself a little bit of a white trash sommelier. Uh, and this guy was mwah, just, just a top shelf piece of shit. He, had, he was covered in tattoos that I can only describe as Mountain Dew tattoos. <laughs> The same way an adult would like drink a whole can of Mountain Dew and be like, put fireballs on my elbows. Like, I thought, you know, that doesn't sound right, but sure. And standing with him is this five foot four Southside Tucson Cholo, blood in, blood out, like, what's up, white boy? Like that, like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, habla. Uh, they're standing there and I get out. And the little cholo's like, hey man, Tommy Green live here? I'm like, that's a terrible fake name, and no. <laughs> you gotta rob a drug dealer, change up the fucking, even like, if they was robbing a coke dealer, he's like, hey, Mark Blow here? Like, <laughs> clearly a synonym for what you're trying to get from. But I'm like, no, no one's here. So he, they leave, they, they both of them walk off. I go upstairs and Amir's there, and he's like, yo, did you see anybody? And I tell him, I'm like, yeah, it's a big piece of white trash, little fucking blood in, blood out. And he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, y'all, those are the guys. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, well, they're gone. They left. We look out, we don't see them. So, you know, we do what drug dealers and their roommates do, and we smoke weed and play PlayStation for two hours. <laughs> uh, I'm about to smoke a cigarette, and uh, I grab the barbecue lighter that I use to smoke cigarettes, because I'm a little bit of garbage myself. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Amir, Amir gets a call and he's like, yo, the deal's back on. They want to do the deal for five pounds, but they're going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk to the street and then get in the car. I'm like, okay. And he's like, yo, will you walk me to the car? And I'm, I'm very high. And uh, <laughs> on weed and victories of Madden. Um, <laughs> if Amir watches this, he knows I'm telling the truth. I ran that shit. Uh, <laughs> But he's like, yo, will you walk me to the car? You're gonna smoke a cigarette? And I'm like, eh, all right. And then as I go to the door, he goes, yo, get the gun. <laughs> now, if you've lived in Arizona, you know how insanely easy it is to get a handgun. It's like buying socks. <laughs> you just walk in, you're like, gun, and they're like, here's your gun. And you're like, this is pretty dangerous. <laughs> But I was with Amir and we went to a gun show and I'm not joking, the first thing he said to the first gun dealer he met was, yo, what's your cheapest gun? And you're like, that's not what I wanna hear as the person that lives next to you and knows you're buying this for self-defense. What he did is he did buy the cheapest gun possible. It had a metal slide, but a plastic handle. He bought a plastic gun. By the way, we took it to the range. It never shot straight. The bullet always bent like some trick shot in an action movie. We're like, ah! <laughs> so Amir's like, yeah, I'll get the gun. And I tell him, I'm like, I'm not fucking using that thing. And he goes, and then with this like aggressive Long Island energy, he's like, yo, 
you dick. Like he, like he was mad at me. He was mad at me for questioning why they want to bring a gun to a drug deal. And he's like, yo, you dumbass. What'll happen is if they got a knife and you show them the gun, then they're, not, they're gonna be scared and they're gonna leave. And for some reason, I believed that rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> fucking, like, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds correct. So I put the gun in my cargo shorts. I grabbed the camel light and the barbecue lighter. Amir has an athletic bag full of five pounds. He walks out in front of me now. I have 10 dollars and quarters on me. You can hear me coming from a mile away. <laughs> When I walk, I sound like a knight in shitty chain mail. It's like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> so we start walking down the stairs. Right when we get to the bottom of the stairs, fucking Mountain Dew tattoos, comes around, gun drawn, gets to a mirror, fucking the tiny Vato comes right up the stairs, gun on my chest, like perfectly right on my chest. Don't get weird. I know it's weird right now, but I'm not fucking dead. I'm here. <laughs> I'm telling the story. <laughs> All right? You can unclench your buttholes. This isn't... This isn't ghost comedy. <laughs> Roy, Roy didn't come up here in that loud-ass jacket like, Do you want to see the other side? <laughs> brought me up. <laughs> so I got a 45 right, pointed right in the middle of my chest. And I'm a child of the 80s. I grew up with Schwarzenegger movies and Stallone movies. And always in those action movies, when uh, a bad guy pulls out a gun on the hero, they always say some cool shit like, you better use that. Uh, turns out I don't. I get very polite if you put a gun on me. I'm like, hi, how are you? I get like customer service voice. Hi, is everything but okay? Would you mind filling out a brief survey? <laughs> And as I do that and I lift my hands up, I've already blown the rules apparently of a robbery because this guy's furious that my hands are up. He's like, put your fucking hands up, put your fucking... I'm like, all right, shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he grabs the... He, when I did that, I lifted my shirt high enough that he saw the handle of the gun. So he takes the gun off of my waistband and he's like, go back inside. And it's like, ah. <laughs> and I'm standing on this second floor of this apartment looking out over my stairwell like, can I fly? <laughs> I didn't really know my dad that well. He could be part flying squirrel. That would have been great if I took off and just drifted away. He's like, fucking white boys are flying now. <laughs> we glide away. But he's like, turn around, go back inside. I'm like, fuck, all right. And I turn around and as I do, he takes my gun, the gun that he took off me and fucking hits me in the back of the head. Now, I'm very lucky to have a minor role on the Showtime show Billions, but best piece of acting I've ever done in my life is getting hit in the head by a five foot three dude holding a plastic gun <laughs> and acting like that shit hurt. He hit me, I was like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, you're so strong. <laughs> you swing it like a Norwegian god swings a hammer. <laughs> So I go to the ground, and immediately right when I go to the ground, you know, he puts me, he zip ties, he pulls out zip ties, he zip ties my arms around my back, he duct tapes my legs together, and then he pulls out an army duffel bag and just starts ransacking our apartment. If I could yelp a robbery, <laughs> five stars. Guy uh, brought his own material, he was prompt, he was direct, he had clearly done this before. It was the mark of a true professional. <laughs> he starts robbing and he goes around our house, he grabs everything he is, and then he starts taking his 45 and coming over to my head and he starts going, where's the money, white boy? <laughs> that is the creepiest laugh to have at that point. That sinister ass laugh from behind me. First off, if, from telling the story, you know I don't trust anyone behind me like that. Like an old mafia boss. I don't like anyone sitting behind me. Then to hear him, ha <laughs> Of course you were scared. You felt your life <laughs> fleeing from you. <laughs> he takes the 45 and he keeps going up to me and he keeps like pushing it on my temple going, where's the money, white boy? 
was the money white boy. Now, I'm fine being called white boy. I've been called white boy my whole life. The only time it stings is when I know for a fact I'm a foot taller than you. He's like, where's the money, white boy? I'm like, I could so dunk on you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah! oh! <laughs> so he keeps going, where's the money, white boy? I go, I don't know. I don't know. And I noticed I start getting this, like, my tone goes from scared to, uh, like, bitchy. <laughs> like, where's the money, white boy? I don't know. <laughs> Like I'm an angry lady at a restaurant. Like I ordered that Diet Coke 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I think that's my one critique of black comedians who do impressions of white people is they always make us so corny and over enunciate. They really miss the cuntiness in our voice <laughs> when we feel like we've been fucked over. You're like, I, can I speak to your man? I need to speak to someone. That's like, whoo. That is angry pink right there. I'm yelling at this guy like we've been dating for 15 years. He's like, where's the money, white boy? I'm like, I don't know, but we're supposed to be at my sister's in a half hour. <laughs> so he takes my keys and um, he takes my wallet. And the wallet that I had at that time, a girlfriend had bought me. Pulp Fiction's one of my favorite movies of all time. And yeah, my girlfriend bought me the bad motherfucker wallet. Uh, and then I ran into a bad motherfucker. <laughs> and that is how you define irony, is when someone takes a joke wallet off you that's supposed to be interpreted as badass. This guy was like, oh, this guy sucks at being a badass. <laughs> and then he takes my keys, and he's like, don't fucking move. And he goes downstairs, and I hear him start my car. And if you drive a piece of shit, you always kind of want it to get taken. <laughs> Like he, I heard him start that car and I was like, yes. <laughs> Fucking Toyota Tacoma, or two seater. I'm already thinking about the truck I'm gonna buy. <laughs> it's perfect for the desert. It's fucking affordable. And I looked at the Kelly Blue Book right in my range. <laughs> he comes back upstairs. He goes, you fucking move again, white boy. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm like, all right, I'm sitting here. <laughs> goes downstairs, I hear him turn the car into reverse, and I hear him pull away, and immediately think, did you rob me, or did I rob you? <laughs> and then I realize I'm wearing swimsuit as underpants, and he just took all my laundry, and I was like, I think he just robbed me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wear these for the foreseeable future. <laughs> I count to about 30, 35, and then I, just pure adrenaline, break the plastic restraints, hop over to the door, lock it, and light up that camel light. Because uh, there's not a better cigarette than after you've had a gun pointed at you. Where you're like, oh, that's flavor country. <laughs> As I light up that cigarette, I see my cell phone. It's a flip phone, because it's 2004. It's dancing. It's dancing. It's like, yamp, 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 yamp. And I don't know the number, and I pick up, and all I hear is, yo, are you dead? Yeah, Amir, there's good cell phone reception in heaven. <laughs> He's like, yo, that guy came around the corner. I just got rid of the bag and I jumped and ran around the corner. Where are you? I'm like, in our apartment. I explained, like, the guy took our car. We're going to have to call the cops because he's got my car and I got to report this car stolen if I'm going to get that two-seater. <laughs> we come back. We clear the drugs out of the apartment. I call the cops. They take down a report, all this shit. Two weeks later, I'm at a bar in Tucson, Arizona, and I get a call on my cell phone. I'm like, Mr. Soder, it's the Tucson Police Department. We have found your 1996 Dodge Stratus. I don't think my response was supposed to be, fuck. <laughs> All right. He waits a second. He goes, Mr. Stoner, also here in the police report, says your, uh, says your wallet was stolen. Can you describe it for me? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the one that says bad motherfucker on it. And the cop without me needs to beat just goes, well, clearly you met a batter motherfucker. And like, oh. <laughs> Be a cop or an open micer. <laughs> Who the hell makes that kind of an inappropriate joke to a robbery victim? But all right, I'll take it. That's the thing, man. Like, you know, I've told this story several times to my friends, and uh, there's always this part where I have to explain that comedians, we use our sense of humor as like a self-defense mechanism. When fucked up shit happens to us, we try to make ourselves laugh, and that just kind of makes it better. I made myself laugh during the robbery, and all my friends are like, yeah, you should get checked. That's fucked up. <laughs> 
But what happened was during the robbery, when he had the 45 on my head and he kept going, where's the money, white boy? Where's the money, white boy? I was like, I don't fucking know. And finally he goes, where's your money, white boy? I go, I don't have any, I'm broke as fuck. <laughs> Cause I was. He hears that and he goes, I find more than a dollar on you, I'm gonna fucking kill you. To which my response was, does change count? <laughs> you have never seen an angrier criminal than someone waiting around, pockets full of change, searching for a lost dollar. The anger on his face, like I was just some disappointing white pinata. We're like, this guy fucking sucks. All right, you guys are a lot of fun. Thank you very much.